Hey, hey developers, today we're gonna look at some advanced view component concepts and patterns that you can use in your everyday view apps. Now, some of the topics we're gonna cover have to deal with slots, deeply nested components, having to deal with JSX, and just how to create and compose components in a better way. So I'm gonna walk you through an example app that I have and some problems and situations you may occur with that app. And I think you should be able to take some of these concepts and use them in your own applications in the future. So if you do, please let me know and leave a comment below. Hey, and I'm Eric, I'm a full stack software developer, but let's go ahead and jump into this topic and look into it deeper. Let's take a look at this app I created. It's Real Basics using Vite and Vue.js 3, and it's gonna highlight a couple of advanced view component patterns that I wanna show you today. So right here, I have this information and I have some lorem ipsum text. So let's take a look at the view Chrome extension. So if I click here, my Chrome extension, you can see here I have this shadow box, which is right here. Uh, it's just a shadow box. I'm using Tailwind CSS to make this dark shadow around it. And then I have this info component, which kind of covers both this information circle and this shadow box. So it's shadow box is nested underneath the info. And then at the top level, we have the app, which obviously has everything underneath it. So I just kind of want to illustrate how this app is put together. Now, the problem I want to try to solve here is this shadow box. I have a bunch of text here, but I want to change it and I wanna change it all the way back in the app. So let's take a look at that a little bit. So if you're thinking uh, to yourself right now, you're like, well, this might be a slot problem, right? We have Vue.js has slots. You can uh, do a lot of cool advanced patterns with slots, or you might be thinking this could be a teleport, which is a new Vue 3 feature. By the way, I have a video on teleport. You can click on right now if you're interested. It used to be called portals but uh, it's a way to take deeply nested information and then expose it up higher. But let's take a look first if we can do like some sort of slot solution on this. Let, let's take a look here. If we're in the shadow box, I can simply take this text right here and I can just surround it by uh, a slot. So I'm gonna put in slot here and that'll surround it. And now we should be able to access this slot from a higher level. But since this shadow box slot or per component is here, and now we have the info, if I change the text right here, this works. So if I put hello world and I save it, yeah, it went ahead and changed. But I wanna actually not change it here. I wanna change it all the way up at the top because I don't wanna have to do any props drilling. I don't wanna have to have to pass a bunch of data down. I wanna actually just change it here from the top. So in between this opening closing brackets of the info, I wanna be able to put hello world here. And obviously if I do this, it doesn't change, like nothing changes here. One way to solve this is to come back over here. I have my slot and then go into the info component and we know that anything in between the opening and closing brackets here will show and replace the slot information here. But I could do something like this. I can create a template. I'll put vslot, since it's a default slot, I don't have to name it. And then I can put in another slot, and this one I'm gonna name. So we're basically taking a slot and then nesting a slot within a slot, which is kind of confusing at first but I'll show you it works pretty well. So I'm gonna call this shadow box default, uh, shadow box slot, I guess I'll call it. You can name it whatever you want. Still, if you refresh this over here, like nothing's changed, it looks still fine. But if I want to, and I'll go back here, if I wanna go back to my app view, now in between the opening and closing bracket here, I need to add in another template because we have a named one. So I'm gonna do template and inside this template, I'm going to put in V slot and in colon and then the name of it, shadow box slot. And now anything I put inside here, hello world, will show up correctly. See hello world's right here. If we do what hello world one, two, three. Yeah, so it works uh, as is expected since it's using this shadow box slot named uh, template here. And now I'm able to kind of drill down. So it's almost like, you know, you, you heard of props, drilling props. This is almost like slot mining <laughs> for, for lack of a better term. It's kind of annoying though, especially if you're doing this throughout your app. If you've, you've created a bunch of primitives inside this primitives folder, and now you're trying to change text from this, this grandparent all over the place, you're gonna have to 
everywhere you you're you're going you're gonna have to add in like this kind of weird pattern where you have this template inside the slot and it works and if you understand it that's fine maybe there's a another way of doing this which is better and by the way if you like this pattern i actually did a whole video on like slots and recursion so you can look in the top right hand corner and click there and learn more about it so let's take a look at a, a different way of doing this so instead of having the slot here let's assume we created like a store and we wanted to have a store that saved this information and then we can grab the information at any time and change it so uh, let's create a new store so i'm going to go in here and i'm going to create a new folder and since we're using view 3 we can create create something called composables and we're going to create basically a poor man's store so i'm going to call it use store and i'm using typescript so i'm going to use ts here and i'm going to import in uh, reactive and by the way uh, this is a way to create reactive variables in view if you want to learn more information I'll put a card above me here above this of the screen here where you can learn more about reactive and refs and it will import reactive from view and then I'm gonna create a store I'm gonna call it store it's gonna be a reactive variable and I really want to create a function here that people can just import into their files so I'm gonna call it use store and it's gonna return the store so this is just a really super simple composable it's a poor man store i'm not even using getters or setters i'm just creating just a reactive object that i can pass around okay now i need to go into my well let's say let's go into the shadow box and we're going to go ahead and use this new uh store that we created so i'm going to import in use store from and i just got to go to from the composables use store and now i should be able to to get the store out of it. So I'm gonna go const store equals use store. And now I can just store whatever I want in it. So I'm gonna store all this text. So I'm going to copy this text here. So I'm gonna call it, uh, let's say store.shadowText. And if I did this right, and I get rid of a few of these things. And by the way, it's giving me this squiggly line because it says that shadow text doesn't, uh, isn't in here. So I'm gonna return store as any. Obviously you wanna set up your types correctly, but I don't care at this point. And don't worry about the blue squiggly lines. That's just my, unknown, my C spell saying it doesn't understand some of this lorem ipsum text. And now instead of having this slot here, so I'm gonna delete this, this slot out I'm just going to show the store.shadow text here, and I'll just refresh it to make sure, yep, still working as I expected. But now I should be able to access this store elsewhere in my app. Close this, and if I go back to, let me just check my info. I'm gonna delete this, so I don't need this shadow box anymore, and make sure it still looks okay. Yep, and I'm gonna go back to my app, and now I should be able to import in that store. So I'm gonna import use store from, in this case, composables use store, and then store equals use store. And now I should be able to go store.shadow, I call it shadow text, and just put in one, two, three. Now, one thing, you, if I do this, you'll notice it didn't work. That's because there's a timing issue of when the component's being created and when we changed it from the child component. So what we need to do is import in the use mounted hook from view, or I think it's on mounted, on mounted. And then I can use the on mounted hook and inside there do this. So it actually changes it afterwards. And you can see now it works correctly. So now I have one, two, three in here. So now I've been able to update a deeply nested component without having to worry about slots. And I can delete this too, so I'm not doing that. Yeah, so now it works as I expected. If I do one, two, three, four, five, it's one, two, three, four, five. But you can see uh, right away that there's a problem here is that I can only pass text in. But what happens if I wanted to put my own component in or I wanted to put in some HTML and some more information inside here? If I just type in, I don't know, div, test one, two, three, div, and save it. It just comes out as text. We could try to do some stuff as like inner HTML or something like that, but I feel like that's a bad pattern. It's dangerous. What a, could be a, a better way of doing this is to use 
um, a pattern with render functions. So I'm gonna create a new component called render info. So I'm gonna create a new file. It's gonna be render info.view. And it's gonna have a script. And then inside here, I'm going to kind of put together this, this render info, which will display uh, some information for us. By the way, I've done a video on render functions before. If you're interested, I actually did a talk on it. So yeah, just click and look at the card at the top and you can click on it and learn more. But basically it's a way to send information to a view component without having to, it's basically a way to, to render information on the screen without using a template. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna import in this define component and I'm gonna export default define component. Now you might be able to do this with script setup. So actually I'll delete that. But I'm, right now I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna show you basically how most people do it with define component. Uh, I'm gonna have a props and I'm just gonna set up one prop called info. Now, if I can, I can either create a render. Well, I'll show you here. I'm gonna have a, a setup function and this is gonna return a function. And this is essentially going to use the render properties in the setup function to render whatever you have in. So this is actually a render uh, using kind of a way to do a render function using the setup. So now it's, this is really simple. It's just returning this props info. Now I can go back into, and by the way, if this is confusing, make sure you pause it, kind of look over the code. I'm going to go back to my uh, shadow box and I'm gonna, instead of using the store.shadow text, I'm going to import in this new render info. So I'm going to import, we're gonna call it render info from, and I'm just gonna get the path right, components render info, and now I should be able to use it here. So I'm gonna do render info, and I need to pass in this info object. So I'm gonna do info here, and I just need to do store.shadow text. Oops, I forgot my closing parentheses. It still shows the div one, two, three here, but now if I go back into my app view, if I use this new uh, h function, which is like a create element, I can sort of do, I can do this h div one, two, three. And cool, so now I've actually passed in a div into here instead of having to, uh, instead of having only text. And so now what's happening here is that this shadow box right here is, I'm passing in that shadow text into the info and it's just displaying it which is really cool. Fortunately, we have to use this h function, which is a render info, a render function inside view. And it's a little complicated and it can become really cumbersome because if I wanted to do a deeply nested object here, you have to do a bunch of h's here. I'd have to like put another h here and then another uh, symbol. And you have to kind of have this deeply nested thing. And if most people don't understand it. So if this was a big concern, I'd say at this point, uh, JSX is the way to go. I kind of hinted at that earlier. So I'll show you how that works. JSX is really simple to add, especially for a Vite app. Just go into your package.json, install. I installed this VJS plug or VJS plugin Vue.jsx. So this recording is at 1.32, so npm i VJS plugin Vue.jsx. Then you need to go into your Vite config and then you just add it in as a plugin. That's all I did right here. Just add it in as a plugin. And then uh, stop and restart and it should work. And to actually get it to work, now if I go back into my app view, you notice I had setup lang equals ts here. I can actually do setup lang equals tsx. And now I can actually pass in like a div like this. So I'm gonna do setup div hello world, close the div. And if I did this right, you can see here, I just passed in uh, and I actually installed JSX before this started, but I just passed in HTML into this shadow text and it's being displayed already, um, which is perfect. So we don't even have to do anything. So if you go into the render info, it's just returning this, but since it's JSX, it just works fine. So let me know what you guys think about this pattern. Would you guys use this in the future? I should, if you guys are interested, I could do a JSX video um, there is some gotchas with JSX and Vue, especially if you're dealing with 
uh, passing things in and slots and VFs and things like that. So let me know. Thanks. Take care.